Hi everybody, this is Chad Carrier here, product owner for uh, Tractor and Stems, and I'm here today to show you a basic walkthrough of the Stem Creator tool. Uh, this will allow you to take your track, uh, whatever you've got, and convert it into our new Stem format so it's ready to be played. Uh, so I'm going to go through this in a couple steps. I'm going to show you uh, some things uh, first in a DAW, so you can see how the files should look before you put them into the stem creator. And then we'll actually go through the stem creator itself, how to load in the files, um, how to adjust the compressor and limiter, maybe add some metadata, and then do the final export. So I'm going to start here in Ableton Live. Um, I've got a song here by Night Drips. Uh, this is one of the songs that was used in the uh, Stems video that was uh, released a few weeks ago. And um, you can see I've got five tracks in here. The top one is the master. And the last four are the stems for the song. Now, we do this because the stem file actually does contain five files, not only the four stems that uh, you'll be playing when you DJ, but also the stereo master just in case you need to play back the file in iTunes or on your uh, iPhone or something like that, and you just need to play it back in stereo. So you have to have all five files together. Now, one of the first things that's very important is that the five files are all time aligned with each other. So uh, when we zoom in on the waveform here, and I find this is easiest to do while zooming in on like the drum track. So we can see the drum track right here, and then we see the stereo master here, and as we can see upon zooming in, these two tracks are totally aligned. If they are not aligned, you're going to need to shift the tracks either left or right until they get into alignment and then cut the ends so that they're all perfectly the same. The reason for this is because cue points and beat grids are shared between the stereo and stem files. So uh, when analysis happens in Tractor or the DJ places cue points in there, um, they're going to be doing it in a specific position in the timeline, and that needs to match for both the stereo and the stem content. So now that I've got this um, time aligned here, I'm going to uh, do a little playback in the software. And uh, one thing I want uh, you to pay attention to is the output volume. Uh, right now, we've got uh, the stereo master, and this has been fully mastered. So when it plays back, it's going to almost hit 0 dB FS, meaning it's just about as loud as it can be. And then using the crossfader, I'm going to switch over to the four stems, and you'll see that the four stems, though everything sounds the same level as the master, will actually go over 0 dB. And this is because the mastering uh, limiter and compression is missing from these stems. So let's take a look at it real quick here. I'm going to start the track and switch to the view where we can see the meters. Now, if we look at just the meter here for the stereo file, we see that it's getting up to a maximum of minus 0.18 dB. So yeah, this thing is very loud. It's almost hitting uh, full scale. And when I now switch over with the crossfader to listen to the four stems, we now see that this level on the master is going way over zero. So what we need to do is bring the stem levels down so that the sum of them do not clip. And I've actually already done that. These four stems should be 6 dB lower, so I will just remove the boost that's been applied in live and now reset the meter. When we look here now, these tracks are not going to hit 0 dB anymore, so we know we're safe. We've got enough headroom uh, for the mixing of all the stems. All right. So now, with the levels correct, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the Stem Creator tool. So I'm going to hide live and launch the Stem Creator, which is this nice little single window application right here. Now, it starts up totally empty. Uh, there's a section at the top for editing uh, the metadata for the track, so like the song name, the artist, and things like that. Uh, the center section is for adding all the audio files. So the four stems that I mentioned earlier, plus the stereo master, all get dropped here. And then the lower section is for playback and for setting the parameters of the compressor and limiter. So I'm going to open up the files, grab the stems, which in this case are bass, drums, synths, and vox and drag those into the tool. Those four get loaded up, and then I'm also going to find the stereo master and drop that into the bottom where it says master file. Now the tool starts up uh, with default uh, names here for the four tracks. We found that when we were building most of the stem sets, this was the most common arrangement. Drums first, 
bass second, synth, or just the general music of the song as the third track, and then vocals as the fourth. Uh, this song happens to conform with that. Um, as you can see, I've got bass, drums, synth, and vox, but they're in the wrong order. So I'm going to head and grab drums and drag it up so now these things are in the right order. Now, if you've got a song that maybe doesn't have vocals, um, the fourth track does not have to be vocals. You can go ahead and rename it to something that's more appropriate. Um, so while the third track might be the most um, significant portions of the music, like the hooks, uh, the main melody of the song, uh, the fourth track can often contain things like uh, sound effects, um, whooshes, uh, anything that's kind of complementary to the song but isn't the main lead. And if that happens, you can always just come down here and type in something else like atmos for atmospheres or maybe just effects for effects, and that will rename the track. But since we've got vocals, I'm going to go ahead and leave it set at Vox. And you can also click these little dots here to choose new colors for the tracks. Typically like to set the bass purple, uh, the main green, and the vocals orange. This is what you'll actually see uh, in most of the stem files that are out there, this kind of arrangement. And so now we're good to go. We can go on to the next step, which is to start uh, adjusting the compression and limiting to get that stem mix back up to the same level as the Stereo Master. Now this tool comes with um, a little switch here on the left side to switch between the stem mix and the stereo master. So I'm going to start with it set to master file. And uh, now when I hit play, we're going to be just hearing the stereo master played back without any compression or limiting. Okay, so I'm going to jump ahead into the track a bit. Here we go. Now we hear the whole thing. And when I compare this to the stem mix, ah, see the stem mix is not as loud as the Stereo Master. So I'm going to use the compression section down here at the bottom to bring this level up. And I'm actually going to use the expert mode to do this. When I click expert, not only do I see the compressor here on the top, but I also see the limiter controls down below. I have full control of everything I need to do to bring this level up. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of compression, I think. Lower the threshold. There we go. It's just a little bit. We're not going to need much on this track. But I'm going to use the limiter to bring the level up the rest of the way. I'm going to just turn down the threshold, and that brings it up. So now I'm going to compare and see how close I am by flipping the switch on the left. Oh, pretty close. Yeah, I want the output a little higher, and I think I want the release faster. There we go. All right, so now when I'm flipping back and forth between the stem mix and the master file setting, we don't hear any difference. So that's exactly where I want this set. So now I know that the stem mix will match the master file, and I'm ready to go ahead and export this. But before I do, I want to do a couple other things to make sure that this file is really pretty and uh, ready for other DJs to use. So I'm going to add a cover art right here to the top. I'm going to add some additional information. And when did this come out? This was probably this year, 2015. What would I call this? Probably just base. Anyway, now with this all set here, I'm ready to do the final export. And it's simple as just clicking export. We see the tool start doing its thing. Uh, the tool is even going to create some additional files here uh, as it's doing its processing. It's converting all the WAV files that I put in into AAC format right now. Uh, and it's also then going to pack all the metadata into the MP4 file. So things like um, the artist name and cover art go in, but also the settings for the compressor and limiter, because these settings will be read from the file at the time of playback. So when this file gets loaded into Tractor or whatever, it will load those same settings for the compressor and limiter and use them during playback. 
Export is successful, we're all done, and as we can see here, we now have ourselves a stem file. This stem file is now all self-contained and ready to go. And if I hit play right now, there it is, the stereo track. So that's as simple as it is. Drop in your files, do a little comparison of the audio, adjust the compressor and limiter to get it to match, put in the rest of the details of the song and hit export. This one's ready to go. And just so you know, when you get the STEM Creator tool, it will come with some additional information. Uh, as I mentioned, this layout of tracks, drums, bass, synths, vocals, uh, we have a set of authoring guidelines that will help direct you on how to arrange the tracks just in case your track doesn't conform to that layout that we just saw here. Um, you know, you might have a very minimal track uh, that has no vocals, doesn't even have a clear lead. Um, there's different ways to assort these things so that um, the DJ will always be familiar with, with the layout no matter what song it is. Drums are always on the left, the leads are on the right, this kind of thing. Um, but also along with this, you're going to get a little PSD file um, that includes uh, the stem tag, which you can actually see here on the cover art. If I open this up, this nice little thing stems right here. So you can paste this over your cover art, and it's a nice way for uh, your users to see that, ah, I actually have a stem version of this file. Um, because as we've seen, it behaves like a normal stereo file in most cases. So this extra little tag lets your users know that they've got the powerful version of your track now uh, ready to use. Oh, one more thing. Uh, the stems-music.com website is where to go to find the STEM Creator Tool and everything else you need to know about STEMS. Uh, to stay up to date with all the latest developments in STEMS, just sign up for the newsletter on the website, and that way you'll know anytime any new tools are available, updates to the documentation, anything like that. Uh, it's, that's all there is for today, so thank you for your time and enjoy making STEMS.